it's 5.30 and I'm calling this meeting to order. First, a reminder that meetings of the psych board are meetings conducted in public. They are not meetings of the public. Nonetheless, members of the public shall be afforded reasonable opportunities to express opinions about matters conducted by the psych board so long as order is maintained. The rules for public comment are, at the conclusion of a select board discussion on an agenda item, but before any action is taken, there may be 10 minutes afforded to public comment. Comments made by the public must be addressed to the chair or to the select board as a whole and not to any individual members of the select board or members of the public. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they should not be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Order and decorum shall be maintained throughout the meeting. Personal, impertinent, threatening, or profane remarks will not be tolerated. For those who are participating via Zoom, please note that chat is not an appropriate avenue for public comment. All public comments must be made verbally and acknowledged by the chair. Please silence all cell phones and a reminder to all that this meeting is being recorded and may appear on the internet. Okay, are there any adjustments to the order of the agenda? I have none. Okay, anybody else have none? I have none. All right. <clears throat> Uh, any sub board members have any comments or remarks? No remarks. Okay, me neither. Can I hear a motion to approve the minutes of November 13th, 2024? So moved. Second. Um, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of November 13th, 2024. We were all here, right? <coughs> yes. 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 <coughs> okay. Um, Any changes? None for me. No. Okay. Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Look at that. We're like all the way through. Um, <laughs> we hear a motion to, uh, for the warrants of the treasurer. I move we approve the warrants of the treasurer upon completion of review. For a second. It's nice. been moved and seconded to approve and execute the warrants upon um, completion of review. That's you, Karen. Alrighty. So payroll warrant dated November 29, 2024, and the amount of $22,843.81. Um, in this payroll is um, the rec coordinator. And um, I just want to say that the fire and rescue had a total of 169.25 hours wow. for the two weeks. For brush fires, mostly? Um, that and training, and um, so I might keep an eye on the, the actual hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think the last payroll was higher mm -hmm. okay. um, based on the amount of calls. Um, they, oh, based on possibly the number of people came? Okay. Okay, yeah, back. people and you know whether it was, <coughs> we had quite a few brush fires in that last two yeah. years. But, um, right, and I mean we may be in the position where we're having a different kind of problem than we had before. Not yes. having enough people, but having too many people, and you know pop, figuring out the best way to manage the budget. The, yeah, the budget. Yeah. Well, I was thinking the people. You know, yeah. not, I mean, the budget would then follow, but um, yeah, yeah, so I think that's important that there's a strategy for you know, how to um, how to deal with our you know luxury of um, having some great firefighters. Right, it's a good thing to have and good problem to have. To yeah, worry. absolutely. Depending on the um, the model too, as we work through the committee. And have our public meeting. So, yeah, more to come. <coughs> uh, accounts payable dated November 16th through November 29th, 2024, in the amount of $80,010.34. There's really nothing in this that's unusual. Our, our, our HR Smith is our auditor. That okay. is correct. Okay. Yeah. Striker sales is um, 
supplies for the light pack that was received two weeks ago oh, for okay. EMS. Uh -huh. Yep. You should change Perkins Home Center to La Valley. Well, it's it's in the system that well, way. Always it's it's Perkins does, yes. And it's, it's, not, always it's not easy to change. <laughs> yeah. It's Nimrick, as you know. Yeah. Uh, what about Hannaford? Hannaford's is the White Whitney. Um, they request uh, gift cards for the holiday. Oh, good. Okay. And they hand them out. To oh, people nice. in the community. Okay. And they do this annually. Who's on that? Who's on that? Um, you have to ask me. <laughs> so, Kate. Um, I can't remember Kate's last name. Um, Steve, um, John's friend Steve. <laughs> <laughs> this is my business. <laughs> Changes. It may be in the town report, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be prepared up. next I'll time. I'll be prepared next time because that's important information. Okay. <clears throat> and consolidated communications is on there twice. Um. So the library has a separate account than the town because they were getting internet and it was paid through a grant and it is no longer the case. And because we have fiber on Route 5, they chose to go consolidated. So, yeah. Okay. Different budgets. Any other questions on the forms? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Moving on to the town manager's report. Oh, we're going to the Hi, Sue. Hello. Um, so, moving along. So, I did want to announce the Putney and Fire Rescue Committee conversation that will be had on December 9th, 2024. Um, there are flyers out there in the public and on social media platforms. So the meeting will be December 9th. It's a Monday evening, 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the fire station. Um, we invite the public to come. Um, this is based on the Fire and Rescue Advisory Task Force that was put into play back in October. And um, we're still working on models and you can come listen to where we were and where we have progressed to and this committee will be making a recommendation to the select board at some point so it could be very informative and if people are curious and have questions um, <coughs> please come to the fire station do we know if it'll be on Zoom as well, or we not? No, that we don't have that capability. And honestly, if there's a large crowd, we may have to move it into the equipment bay. Everybody fine to sit on the fire truck. <laughs> well, we have 31 personnel on fire and rescue, so that's going to be half the room right there. Okay. They've already heard what we're doing. Right? <laughs> they should be pretty bored with it at this point. Right. But um, <clears throat> so we'll play that one by ear and see what happens. Okay. Um, I met with EMS yesterday, Evan Martin, um, Billy Strauss, and Daniel Garcia Galili. And we went over the budget. Um, we talked about a lot of different things. Um, so trying to understand how to support them. And just so you folks know, the budget has been um, restructured for fire and rescue. So we can break out fire. Oh, good. 
versus EMS. Yeah. So we'll have a better tracking mechanism to see the cost. Yeah. Knowing that the call volume is higher for EMS at the moment, but um, so we're making some changes, and you know, it's going to yeah, take a little time to collect the data. Yeah. But um, so I, I did work with them yesterday. Uh, it's about two hours, but it was a good, productive meeting. Um, so there is no fire and rescue report tonight, Peg, only because the interim chief is on vacation. Um, and I didn't, you know, we'll get it next meeting. Uh, I met last week um, with a person who has a background in environmental health and safety. This person fits the requirements for emergency management director and or deputy health officer. So their skills range, in, um, their skills are risk management, construction management, emergency management, safety management, hazardous analysis and risk-based preventative controls, policy development, project management, leadership, and more. So I was very impressed with this um, candidate. I suspect they have more um, uh, knowledge of emergency management than I do, so I, I would not mind taking that off of my book. I'm trying to help you out, Thank you. friend. <laughs> but, no, I agree with you. I, I, I feel at this point um, we really need to um, have a match for mm -hmm. what we're looking for mm -hmm. and not try to spread it out and have people, you know, it's good to learn alongside yeah. somebody with this, the background. So I think we can build this. Honestly. Question, what are we looking for? Emergency management director, mm -hmm. uh, deputy health officer, because I'm just filling in as intro. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And um, this could expand depending on um, one, the town plan, and two, this person also has construction management background. So any large projects in town, um, you know, let's say town hall. Yes, they can oversee. You know, make sure the permits are in place. And as well as a zoning administrator. Do they have grant writing experience by any chance? Um, so, which is good. Yeah. And uh, all of those things taken together, do you see that as a full time no. position? What part of an FTE? I see it as a stipend position. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I don't know how many hours, but I think a position like this, I believe myself, in my opinion, a position like this can be a shared resource with other towns mm -hmm. or other agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> is this, this person's not local. Yes, they are. They are. They live right here in Putney. They do. Oh, for some reason I thought I was under the impression they did not. No, they do. Oh. Well, that's extra exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, um, so you're you're talking about considering somebody, a local person, who, it, in a contractual arrangement, has needed. Um, yes. And is that something that they are looking for? Is that what they are open to? Yes. They're not looking for a full time. Yes. I, I, yeah, I had a broader conversation with this person and um, I'm going to be reaching out to agent, state agencies uh -huh. to see if we can build a program around this, these qualifications. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Great. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. There's a lot of um, skill base here, yeah. and right now, there's not a place for this person to utilize them. And I think we do have that opportunity right now. To utilize some of it and to collaborate with and yes. have them plug right. into a more Spendy. regional yeah. Right. position. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I love the... <laughs> Yeah. Cross um, <clears throat> boundary 
sharing with other towns. Yeah. Yeah. Strategy. Yeah. The, those positions, especially, yeah. would go well across the region, mm -hmm. neighboring towns. Yeah. How so. does something like that get worked out then? You know, um, let's say, you know, a different towns actually could put together a full time position. Does it go through the regional commission or how, how is it? How no, do you like a memorandum of understanding, like, much like we have with the sheriff's office with Westminster? Right. Right. Um, it's a it's sheriff's 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 municipal sheriff's. agreement. Mm -hmm under the terms of, you know, the towns that are involved. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. So I'll keep you posted on that. Thank you. Um, I also have a lead on a potential part-time zoning administrator. This person um, would be shared between two other towns, and I received positive feedback from one town already, and will um, inquire with the other town and I'm very excited about the qualifications of this person too and it's the same concept mm -hmm. as the EMD mm -hmm. so that would, that would yeah. help. fingers that would help crossed help. Yeah. which towns do you um, Windsor and Rockingham mm -hmm. okay. so nice um, I'm hoping to um, have that wrapped up by the end of the year. So we'll see. We're fingers crossed. I'm very excited about that. Um, town Hall will be closed Thursday for Thanksgiving, and the building will not be open on Friday this week. Um, the second installment of property taxes are due Friday next week, December 6th, and the building <coughs> will be open <coughs> on the Friday on that Friday, December 6th. Um, quick um, renew town hall project, leadership advisory committee. Um, so we started having meetings, kickoff meetings, and um, we have a team pulled together. And I believe Sue had mentioned that in the last meeting. Um, but we went over, you know, roles, responsibilities, and communication, and um, having protocols, you know, for, you know, meeting notes and things like that. So we can follow the, you know, this project through to the end, because there's a lot of detail and logistics, and things are kind of spider web webbing out. Um, so we're going to bring that together. Um, so the first phase of the project is the schematic design. Um, I did receive the contract from Vermont Integrated Architects this week. I'm going through that now. It's 25 pages. Um, typical architectural contract. Mine would have been like five pages. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so I have to go through that. Um, we have to have a meeting because I have questions, but other than that, um, once we get that signed, we can really ramp up. Mm -hmm. um, the topographic survey has already been done. That's, you know, um, surveyor goes around and looks for, you know, what's on the ground, you know, and... I'm surprised they didn't already have that. What was that? It's, I'm surprised they don't already have that. Um, well, here's the thing. So we may require a boundary survey oh, okay. only because there is um, debate about the north boundary line here. So and oh. there's only one pin that has been found okay. on the entire property. So I foresee us, and it would behoove the town with a project this size to make sure. To we, know what we have. Yeah. yeah, where our boundaries yeah. are. Yeah. Um, so I'll keep you posted. Fair That's, <clears throat> that just started, so mm -hmm. um, it is part of the contract. Okay. Um, let's see what else do I have here. Um, as you all know, we did receive the MERP, Vermont Municipal Energy Resilience Program grant of $402,500. Um, we're going to move ahead with that contract mm -hmm. because there is no match. So it's 100% funded by the state. Um, 
So I'll get that finalized and off to them tomorrow. Um, we did inquire too with Wyndham Regional Commission, and when I say we, it's Sue Coakley, Lisa Papazian, um, for the most part, and then our architect is part of the team, and Bob York and Peter Rood. Okay. Um, we did inquire with Wyndham Regional Commission, although um, it is public information about the scoring. Um, this he, Wyndham Regional wasn't able to obtain that information. Those we wanted to know why we didn't get the full 500. Yes. Um, so we're just going to go ahead <clears throat> with the contract and we'll, you know, okay. it's a big chunk. So maybe there'll be something left over and they'll reallocate some more money. Um, so the building assessment work was done. And I also, I have reached out to David Mann who is a licensed surveyor that's going to give us an estimate for the boundary work, boundary survey work. So I think I touched base on everything on here. Not as eloquently as Sue does, but I will get better at it. <laughs> the project isn't changing the footprint, right? It's, it's no. not changing the footprint of the building. No, you're not. Okay. No. It's still a big to know where our boundaries are, but just, just curious. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right, and that's all I have. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions, yeah. comments? Anybody in the room have any questions or comments? There doesn't appear to be anybody online. So moving on to boards, committees, and commissions. Uh, the first one is the Planning Commission Status Report, which is yeah. soon. Do we have copies in people's packets? I brought copies with me. Um, I gave them yeah, copies. The in the memorandum? Yeah, it's a memo. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Well, thank you, Karen, for the new town hall report. RTH. Everybody's saying town hall renovation. <laughs> Too long. RTH. Okay. RTH, renew town hall. So you'll see that more. Can we put a vowel in there and make it like a. <laughs> we have a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like that. RTH. <laughs> so. Um, so my report no longer includes that because it's being handled by the project director. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> Um, this is my monthly report for the Planning Commission. Um, record Sue Coakley, I'm chair of the Planning Commission. It's my monthly Planning Commission report. Um, several things to update you on. Um, first of all, to say overall, it's a lot going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to do it all in the time frames that we have. And you'll hear me talk about needing to adjust time frames because it's too overwhelming. Yeah. We want it done well. But but we need to have enough time to do that. So um, the housing needs assessment and action plan has been the biggest activity um, other than the town hall things that uh, Karen was just talking about. Um, and uh, we're working with the, the consultant Kamoin Associates. Um, since I last saw you, we had a community meeting um, at uh, Landmark College. It was well attended, very interesting meeting, um, a lot of great input to look at draft strategies, but lots of questions, lots of trying to understand what the research is showing. Um, but it was great to have that input. We had facilitators from the Project Advisory Committee, but also from the Housing Solutions Task Force, VCRD, and also John Dunbar. Uh, invited him to come down from Rockingham to help us think about that. And he's been here a couple of times now for a couple of reasons. Um, so that was very useful. Um, that resulted in some revisions to the strategies that Kamoin presented to the Commission and Advisory Committee at um, our November meeting, November 12th. And at, at that meeting, we began to try to process that as well as begin to develop action plans. And we just found ourselves still struggling to really understand the strategies, where they came from, and um, feeling really grounded enough to write action plans. 
Um, I also observed that there's a lot on the table. There's like 13, 14 strategies. And before we go deep into all of them, maybe we need to prioritize them. And I've recommended that to Kamoin. <clears throat> and they've begun a process using some criteria to help us uh, identify those that we really should invest most in. And so the kind of criteria include things like um, big impact. It'll, it, it has the likelihood, it, it could make a big difference in meeting our housing need and the other, other findings that we found. Um, and secondly, it's something that has some good chance of succeeding. Mm -hmm. And that would be things that already have momentum elsewhere, building on things that are already going, because starting from scratch is harder. Um, so what can we build on? What can we borrow? What can we team up? And I think there's a great opportunity for partnership with other towns that are working on things like this around us and trying to explore that. That's a little beyond what Kamoy knows about. But, um, I think looking at likelihood of success it means those kinds of things. And the third one is, is feasible. We can find people and money to do it. So those are the three prioritization criteria. Back to two, the yes. second one. Um, could you give us an example of some things like the towns could be collaborating on? Yeah, I think one that's uh, on my radar, uh, again, talking with John Dunbar, Rockingham, I didn't understand that the incremental development initiative is actually part of a larger framework. And the Brattleboro Development Cr Credit Corporation helped set that up in Rockingham. And I was like, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I learned that when John Dunbar was giving his talk at a Housing Solutions Task Force meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went and read more about it. And it is a way, it is an approach to infill development that just makes sense. It's really putting key stakeholders together in an ongoing way to help support projects to move forward. Well, we sure need that. And I've been hearing the Housing Solutions Task Force ask for that kind of capacity uh, in town. So that we could be part of a network, building on something that others are doing, what are some of the best practices, and get support to do it. So that's one example. And when you do that kind of thing, it's market making in the sense that you have banks and developers at the table and they begin to see how a town is trying to align these things to make projects possible. And that's kind of a market lubricant, you know, when, when there's that kind of effort. So um, that's just one example of something I've looked at. So I want to look around a little more at that. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that I've also been meeting with the Southeast Vermont Housing Coalition, a lot of their focus is on meeting uh, the needs for people who are unhoused, but it goes beyond that. They certainly, their strategy now says we need housing for all if we're going to meet the housing for any particular group. It's, it's just not a one-off. It's, it's a <coughs> comprehensive thing. So I'm, I'm meeting in a subcommittee that just started on housing development, which is one of our big challenges of how can we create more housing. Assuming the Windsor-Windsor project uh, that got the green light from the Supreme Court moves forward, uh, that's 25 out of 80 units that Kamoin mm -hmm. suggested. And so that's, that's good, but we still need like 50, 55 more. So um, I think we're going to need to seek those partnerships and put our ear to the ground more for that. But also um, looking at examples like uh, the one Karen just suggested recently, looking at Bristol, which mm -hmm. has a revolving loan mm -hmm. fund. Can we, can we borrow? Can we just say, what did you do? Yeah. You know, can we just do something like that? I think we can have our own solution around that, but if, can we model it after what others have done? And I'd, I'd like, yeah. yeah, I'd like to see more of those kinds of things. And I, those solutions haven't made it way, they're, they're way into the Kamoin study yet, you know, the kind of recommendations. So, um, so we need to slow it down so we have time to really look at those other kinds of ideas. And um, my proposal that I'll be speaking with the Planning Commission and the Advisory Committee next Tuesday about um, is to uh, not do a community meeting this, this month, and I'll get that note out, and, and put that off to the end of January because we're not ready. We don't have something that can be really productive for people to really work with. And to instead have a couple of smaller Saturday workshops that would include the advisory committee, open to the Housing Solutions Task Force to participate as much as they want to in those, but to really go through the strategies that have been there and to finalize them and prioritize them 
and begin and work out and build out the action plans. Um, and my intent is to do some work ahead of that to really set that up more. And I'm trying to get Kermoyne to do that. They have already responded with a better framework. But the content of it is still not looking entirely right yet, the right fit for Putney. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. And um, it's, it, it's going to take a hunkering down to really work that through. Um, trying to do it all by next Tuesday, and I'm sure I can. Yeah. Yeah, there's a holiday. Um, but I am at least going to present the framework and some ideas of what it, where it needs to go, and I think that'll be the work of the workshops. And I'll propose to do one in December, one in early January, then have a special meeting of the Planning Commission with the Advisory Committee in mid-January to say, where did we land? Hopefully, Kamoin's going to come along and be able to do more of this. I think they're trying. They're, they're, they're listening. They've brought other people in from the firm because they can see that it's not exactly where I would like it to be at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but my plan is to have a final report still by the end of February. I mean, we were going to, Karen was telling me, you weren't going to have time to look at it till February anyway. So, um, probably, yeah, to be fair, probably not. Yeah. Right. Looking forward to it though. Yeah. <laughs> so, February 19th is the last meeting before this select board is done. Yeah. And um, so, my plan is to have a final report at that point. Mm -hmm. That has meant. So that'll be a big discussion uh, on Tuesday with the committee, and I'll present them a framework and some thoughts about how it could work in the workshops. Um, but again, it's what Kamoin said is what is the messy middle of a project, where you're really right into the middle of it. You need to, to make sense of it. Um, one other thing I've asked them to do uh, to help us better understand where they're coming from on strategies is to um, take the findings they've presented already, which been, have largely been about the market research and um, demographic research they did, but they also, we had the, town, they had the survey, town survey, and we also had focus groups. And I said, you need to help us understand what you found from those as well. And I said, give us some overarching conclusions. So with all of that, what does that mean for needs and opportunities? You know, what are those key conclusions? which are different than findings. And we should be building strategies based on these conclusions about needs and opportunities. So I'm kind of walking them through that. They, they agree, and they're doing that. Um, but, you know, I get everything Friday afternoon, and I had a weekend, and yeah. can't get it all done. Do you get a sense that, um, in talking with them, that uh, we are a typical town or do you get a sense that they perceive us to be have a different um, uh, leaning towards uh, the, our housing process you know I'm just kind of curious what how they perceive us as a town it's a good question um, Peg I, I can't say that I can answer that directly but I can see that they're treating us as if we're something different um, and I have reminded them that we're a town that's dealing with a lot of divisiveness around housing. And we're trying to use this project to bring us together about what we can do and need to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to listen carefully to people. And I think they're a little more used to, there were the experts, here it is, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they are the experts, but our town, our community process is actually very important. And we have to demonstrate that we're using it. Mm -hmm. um, and the Planning Commission's not got a lot of worker bees in it, um, and so a lot falls to me to, mm -hmm. to do this, um, and it just takes time oh, yeah. to dig through it. But I feel like they're being responsive, and I'm hoping I will get a core team together from the Project Advisory Committee to really work with me to suss through this more and be ready for a workshop. I'm going to propose Saturday, December 14th is the last thing we do this year, and then begin January 4th with um, another workshop. And hopefully that will put us in a good place to have a community meeting. January 30th is the date that I've now gotten from Kamoy they could do, and that feels like enough time to, to put it together. In the meantime, the zoning bylaw modernization project um, continues. It, this phase was always meant to be a research phase 
to, for Wyndham Regional Commission, our consultant, to understand what our needs and issues are. And um, I'm going to give a shout out to Phil Bannister, who has done a really good job of identifying from the town plan, but also his knowledge of our zoning regs, where are the places we need to do work in particular. Mm -hmm. And we've asked Wyndham Regional Commission to put on the table, given their review of our, our, our zoning regs and our subdivision uh, regulations as well, what from recent state requirements are we short or we benefit from looking at again so that we can put the state requirements into the mix. I'm not sure there's a lot there. I haven't been getting anything yet, but I'm pushing hard to say, just make sure you know that we, we, we have it all on the table. And then um, best practices to address the issues you know, that we might pick up from other towns. So we will, we're working on that, we're making good progress. Um, and uh, we met with Wyndham Regional Commission last week and what we agreed is to sort of slide the whole schedule. I said, we're breathless doing housing. We can't do that right now, and it's too much for the community to try to layer that on right now. It's just too much. So uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, have our advisory committee for that meeting at our February monthly meeting and go over with them the schedule for, go over what we've discovered as the focus, as it appears now, um, and then our community outreach plan, and in discussion with Wyndham Regional Commission, we were going to do focus groups, we found that we weren't ready for them and it was too hard to do. And in fact, people don't even know in the focus groups what's going on with zoning. So it might be better to begin with a kind of zoning 101 education about what this is, what's required, where we stand today relative to requirements, which is not bad. It's not like we're in a, in a, in a hole about zoning. We have some improvements to make, but it's more improvements than a redo. Um, and what does that look like? Um, and, and possibly do an inter interactive uh, game kind of, it's, um, it's a sort of a, a development game to look at a project and see how you might develop it and to do it based on Putney's requirements and help people get an idea of what's involved. So have a community engagement like that that's educational and fun and brings people into the reality of our situation. What a brilliant idea. Does somebody, did somebody make this simulation? Or yes, it exists. ACDC did that. Mm -hmm. um, and John Dunbar <laughs> so, did, did so a very so nice... People like me John Dunbar did a really, <laughs> as a developer, yeah. made an exquisite example for Rockingham. Yeah. But their issues are very different than our issues. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can't just borrow that. I kind of said to John, could we just borrow it? And he goes, you think it's going to look like Putney? I said, no. Uh -huh. I said, you should try something for Putney. So actually, when the regional is going to help us create this. Great. Cool. So I think that'll be a good way to begin. Then we'll do our focus groups to drill into things. Mm -hmm. um, and that, this will slide that schedule. We were going to finish in December next year, a year from now. But the summer's a hard time to bring people together. I think it's hard to bring Windham Regional together because they do we have to do the summer? I said, well, you know, if it's not a productive time, we'll, we can go a little later. So it might be this, it might be January next year when we're having hearings rather than November, December. So that schedule would have to slide a little bit. Okay. But I'm, I'm putting it all together into one calendar to discuss with the Planning Commission. I've already given them a heads up on, on some of this um, for discussion on Tuesday. So. I think we're being practical mm -hmm. um, about it, and um, it really will be important uh, to have more commissioners. Um, we are losing, probably, the, Vanessa, I think, is going to cycle off, her term ends, and we have, an, we have an empty one. I'm already saying to the project advisory committees, please think about this, and mm -hmm. I will ask them. And I'm, I'm tapping people, but no so far, traction. nobody... Nobody, no traction. Not yet, but I'm not sure it's quite top of mind, but I'll bring it up more. Good. But I, I am bringing it up all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an issue happening everywhere. It's not just a Putney issue. Try to mm -hmm. find people to serve on committees. And the Planning Commission is a very specific one, too. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, true. It's select board, you don't really have to know anything about anything. You just have to get elected. Mm -hmm. Planning Commission, it'd be nice to know, you know, it'd be nice if you knew something about zoning. That's right. Uh, and, and planning. Planning. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> Uh, so um, you know, um, and and you and you are doing real, real 
you know, pen to paper work. So, um, but if anybody's interested in, in getting into town government, um, I was on the planning commission for a while. If you have any interest in, in planning or in, in zoning or in state statutes or, um, you know, like to geek out on, on plans, um, please reach out to Sue. Um, it's, it's, a great, it's a great way to get into uh, to, to town government yeah. if that's your really work. And our, our style is a very collaborative one. We really like to work together and, um, and to bring the public in. And that's been a different process. Yeah. So people who have appetite for that kind of thing, um, we would welcome that. So thank you. So that's the overall where those projects are going. Um, and the other thing that's, on the, that's happening right now is the grant application to VTrans for the Putney Landing Walkway. So the uh, solicitation came out kind of late. It was uh, the end of October. Um, and so, I've, uh, so Phil Bannister and myself and Karen are working on it. And we have a lot of very good material to work from, you know, from the Dufresne Consulting Group report and all of that. Um, so um, it's due December 31st. Um, it is the Transportation Alternatives Program. It provides 80% of the money for design and construction of a project, particularly where a feasibility study has been completed, which it has been for us. Um, the total budget of the uh, phase one or stage one, as I was calling it earlier in, in the in, in the Dufresne report, is called phase one, so I'm using phase one, um, is $116,000 to do the crosswalk um, at Route 5 and the walkway between the banks. And 80% of that would be $92,800, and our 20% share would be $23,200. We have a sidewalk reserve fund that has 100,000 in it, so we have money. And these right now are all 2027 dollars, which is how they had to be reported. I'm hoping this project could happen a little faster than three years because it's a very really straightforward project, I hope. Yeah. But they say you should allow three years for these things. So in any case, we're moving forward. The application is going to go in in mid-December. In mid um, and I have, um, there's a number of things excuse me, that are required. Um, and one of them is a letter of support from the select board. So I have drafted one. Um, you have it in your packet. Um, it is written to meet the requirements and the points you get um, for doing things like addressing affordable housing, economic development, accessibility, a range of things. So a and I have a, a clean one as well. Oh, sure. Is it in our packet? It is in your packet. It should be. It's right attached in the same package. It's attached. It's no, attached. it's not attached to your it's packet. Not. It is oh, in your select board new business. It's item oh. B. Oh, okay. It's after. Sorry, it's later. It's later. It's, later. it's yes. after the email. Okay. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Um, so there's the letter, yeah, and I'll just introduce it because it just this is the way to talk about it. You may be voting on it later, but um, uh, so this is really written to meet the requirements. Um, it, I'm using the phraseology phase one. I was using stage one earlier, but you will see in your packet um, a little uh, chart of the fund, the cost of the project. This one it has yellow on it, mm -hmm. um, and this is the basically the budget that uh, Dufresne put together. Um, and phase one is the crosswalk and sidewalk from Route 5 to Old Depot Road to go that far. That's the segment that we had strong support for. Um, and so you see the budget, 116,000, just so you, that sort of grounds you and you can see what's included. Mm -hmm. um, it does, does include a right of way that we would need to negotiate um, with the bank. Um, again, it partly depends on exactly where the crosswalk is going to be, and that that's technical. Like, if you want to try to avoid curb cuts, and it's it takes some real thought. Um, it'll be by the 802 bank. It might be most likely that it would be the 802 bank, but credit we, union. Credit union. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a credit union person, so there you go. <laughs> call the bank. Uh, the credit union, it would be um, very likely there. But we have, and, and we've, we've had some conversations with them, but until there's something real, um, I think 
probably a letter, ask for a letter of support from them. The Yellow Barn has said that they will write a letter of support. So try to get a few letters of support. They're not required, but I think it will just help the application. Um, it also includes the, the letter of support um, in the application that we're busy filling out. It says that you have to be willing if you need a right of way, that if you're not able to achieve it through an easement that you're willing to do eminent domain. So okay. the letter says that should we, I mean, there's budget to do the right of way, and I don't know that it'll be controversial, but we have to write that in there. So you'll see that in there, um, that if needed, we're willing to, the town would be willing to do that. Um, it talks about all the benefits, which is what you know pretty well. We've talked about it. You can read that. Um, but it also includes, as I had mentioned back in my June, February and June report with you, that you all, you know, approved at the June, I think it was the 15th meeting, that you said, go ahead and you know, apply for the money. But um, with that is the idea that phase one is not sufficient because there's all the folks on Putney Landing, including going all the way down to the Putney Inn, the, the daycare, the youth center, there is no safe passage up Putney Landing Road. Yeah. And what Dufresne said is, it's too complex a thing for them to assess. Uh, to try to change that intersection and what to do about that. So it was just expensive and it will take a lot of years and they didn't feel that it was really belonging in the feasibility study. But they said you should ask VTrans about that. So we call that uh, a second phase of the project as, or stage two is just to separate it from this table which is a little different. Um, stage two project to ask VTrans to partner with the town to please, you know, work with us to create a new intersection for Putney Landing Road and Route 5 with a way for pedestrians Sorry. and bicyclists to be able to access the East Putney area, that part of East Putney down by, down by the um, Putney Inn, yeah. including serving the East Emerson retail operations that are also very connected to our town and our village. I think we have to put that out there. That's really what the public asked us to do. We can't, whether it's a roundabout, I, I'm not an engineer, I can't say that it would be a roundabout, but some new design that would integrate way for people to come up from down below, mm -hmm. um, get across the bypass. And the, the exits. The exits. <laughs> the ramps, yeah. And, and get across over to, you know, Carol Brown. Way and and yeah. Alice Highway Drive. And we have more housing coming. This is economic development. Yeah. Whatever it's a long the old paper mill site there. Right. So this yeah. is a long play, but I think as we ask for this, because our study said ultimately this we, this needs to happen, but they couldn't propose it in here. It was too big for the study. So there's a plea in here to you know in addition to this for for Btrans you know to uh, uh, work with us. Um, so you'll you'll see that. Um, and, and the case for it. Um, it isn't, it's, oh, it's so just, it's just, it's just, it's just a, kind of an aside, but we're putting it in the letter of support. Yes, yeah, okay. because I think the study that they approved talked about this. In mm -hmm. fact, I give you, I give a quote, you know, about where that is. So, um, anyway, the letter, I just want to point out that the letter does reference that. I think VTrans needs to know we see it as part of a larger project. Right. This is what we can do to create value and safety right now. But it's not the end of the... But is serious about pedestrian safety and you guys got to get on board. That, thank you. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And I think it's an important message because yeah. if we're going to ever get that cooperation, they okay. need to hear it. Right. Okay. I'm so, with that. Yeah. So there's the letter. Um, and I have it got copied to our representatives just so they understand that we're asking for this money from the trans mm -hmm. always want to know that. Um, and uh, we also have to talk to Shauna Clifford, who's the uh, District 2 Transportation Administrator for VTrans, to let them know that we're going for this. We have to get a letter of support from Windham Regional Commission. I've reached out to their mm -hmm. staff person to you know, see what they need from us to write their letter of support for this. So, um, so those are the other pieces. So you know, this is not essential to have it tonight, but it would be great to just check this because it's one of the things we have to have. We're going to try to be done by mid-December. We don't want to be doing this over 
the Christmas, New Year holiday. And then we get it in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Okay. Does Does anybody have an objection to approving this tonight? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's get it over with then. Then we'll make the resolution to. <laughs> I didn't write the resolution, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so to can I hear a motion to approve? The letter uh, letter of support to um, the Vermont Agency of Transportation um, for a grant for a total of ninety-two thousand eight hundred, um, and authorize myself to sign it. So moved. Seconded. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve a letter of support to the Vermont Agency of Transportation for a grant in the amount of ninety-two thousand eight hundred, and approve. Um, Authorize myself to sign it. Is there further discussion on the board? Um, do you have anything else to add? Okay. There's nobody on the online. Do you have any comments? Okay. Then hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Great. I will Wonderful. sign. Is it in here? Uh, I, I brought a copy. You didn't have it. It should be in there. It should be. Is there one special design? There's supposed to be one in there. Um, anyway, I, last thing I'll just say about this, thank you, that's the end of my report, I don't really have very much else to say uh, at this moment, but I think the Putney Landing walkway is project and what we're going for is a great example of community listening. Mm -hmm. People really came out, we had comments, it was a robust conversation, and people came around going, yeah, this, we really need to do this. And when I went to the Yellow Barn discussion about their, their public garden, I mentioned this as one of the things that was coming in. They are very excited about it because they have parking across the street that they use for the Elbarn activities, and it's in the dark. And they have elderly people, many of them, and they're, they're, this will be fabulous. So anyway, I just love the, that this came out of a deep listening in the community. We, we stepped back to just take another look, and good on us that, yeah, that we got a good, good response to help us shape it into something different. So thank you for spearheading it. Yeah. Um, do you want this letter? Are you staying with us or I just signed it so you can take it? Yeah, I've had one before. Yeah, I think I would like to leave it with Karen because okay. Karen is doing the application. Yeah. Okay. So she has, has to do a copy. Yeah. Send me a copy. Yeah. Sure. But you'll have the original. Sure. Okay. For the town records. Okay, great. Um, is there anything else, Karen? I need, I need. Yeah, I had one item on here: comprehensive village plan for oh, right. avenues. Okay, I can just mention that. Yeah. So our town plan calls for us to do a comprehensive village plan, um, and this is about the time we should start looking for money to do it. Right about now. Uh, two things about it. Um, interestingly, that is one of the combined recommendations. I did point to that. <laughs> to them in our town plan, and it resonates strongly with people to do that. I think that is a that one's going to rise right to the top. So that's that's great. Maybe we'll use that one to build out an action plan. But um, the other thing I'm I'm going to say that I've been thinking carefully about what that could mean once we understand what is happening with the Putney paper mill. Mm -hmm. We know they have to do their due diligence. We all know in the best world possibilities, BDCC would be in a position to help repurpose the, how that land is used. Um, it, it brings up a very special opportunity for Putney to, to do something in the village center that we never would have imagined before. And to consider that whole block, not just the Putney paper mill. Mm -hmm. So the timing of doing the comprehensive village plan is probably exquisite. Because by the time we hear back from the Putney Paper Mill, we may have had time to get grant funding and put something together. Um, this is going to require some more thought. It's a bigger idea than we initially thought in terms of what it means because of opportunity. Um, and um, I know that Discover Putney is very interested in partnering uh, with the town on that. So um, it, is, it is on the short list. Again, I just talked about breathlessness and. I do have a role to don't don't uh, lift more than you can eat, um, and that's a this piggy role. Uh, but 
if you don't know who Miss Piggy was, I could have to a different time. <laughs> uh, that was, um, uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway, I just, okay, it needs to happen. I have, a, I have appetite to do the, the comprehensive village plan. I want you all to know that. Um, and I think it, it is a really important town initiative. I don't have a particular source of funding. I actually want to talk to Peter to see if he can give us some thoughts on that because mm -hmm. it also could fund town hall renovation. Right. It could be a community block grant. CB, yeah, that might be what we're talking about. Okay. So um, anyway, I just, if you have other thoughts on that, let me know. But I think it's our an, another sort of next big project that's very timely for sounds, us. For sounds our exciting. Yeah. So okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Sue. All right, any other comments on the select board questions? Uh, any comments on them? Okay, moving on to um, select board new business. Uh, the first one is errors and omissions um, for the listers. Um, I didn't have Jordy here tonight. Yeah. It I, was a small request. I, I think I don't want this one anyway. There's um, a narrative in there as well from Jordy. Afterwards, oh, yeah. So, um, this is errors and omissions. This is during the town wide reevaluation. Wow, reevaluation of um, Kathleen O'Reilly's primary residence was assessed as having a full unfinished basement, but it's on slab with no basement. So, the correction results in a 12,300 decrease in value. Um, so can I hear a motion to accept the errors of emissions of a, a change from 314.500 to 302.200 for parcel, um, for span 504.158, oh gosh, 105.41. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to accept the errors of emissions for change of value from 314.500 to 302.200. For span 504-158-10541. A discussion among the board. Any comments in the room? Um, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, we already did the new trans sidewalk grant. Yes, we did. Um, time meeting preparation. <coughs> Timeline and deadlines as you carry. Yes, so in your packet are the deadlines for town meeting, leading up to town meeting. Um, so just review that if you have any questions. Um, Nothing has changed since last year, right? This is basically the same. It's the it's same. Obviously different dates, but right. the same. Yep. So, yep. okay. Yeah, town meeting will be held on March 3rd, 2025 at Putney Central School. And, um, we are currently working on town report. We are currently working on draft budgets. Okay. Um, it's, it's coming together. Um, our draft audit has been received. I have looked through it. Um, I had a couple questions, but I'm pretty comfortable with it, honestly. So um, just to let the board know about the budgets, um, so the library, sewer, water are in draft format right now. I don't foresee any changes to them. Highway, I have one item I want to look at. And then um, because we have to buy a dump truck this year. Not this year, in our next fiscal <clears throat> budget, excuse me, 2026. And um, so we are looking to purchase a dump truck. And I think we're just going to replace the dump body on the one ton. That is due to be replaced in 2026. But if we can just do the dump body, we're going to save some money. Mm -hmm. Because the truck is still in good condition. It's just the dump body is rusting out because of salt. I bet, yeah, I bet that's the first part to be yeah. out. Yeah, because they use it as uh, yeah. salt in the wintertime. Um, so I just have that one piece I want to connect it. And then um, 
I'll be all set with that one. I want to run it by Lenny one more time too, just to make sure. And then the general fund, like I said, I met with EMS yesterday. I need to meet with fire to like wrap that whole department up. And I'm looking at a couple, well, there's VLCT passive. We haven't received that number yet. So I can do a guesstimate and throw a number in there. I really don't want to do that. I'd rather have a real number. And the county assessment, Eileen's favorite, that never comes until January. Right. Um, and we have no say over. We have no say over that. Um, so those are the only two numbers I'm really waiting for. But I want to play with some options. And I can't tell you yet, when we have our budget talks, then we can talk about, you know, percent of increase on each budget and then how to offset those increases. Okay. My, I first have to see where we're at. And when will we start having those conversations? So, December. You said we wanted a couple extra meetings. Yeah, so I'm looking at December 4th, December 14th, um, December 18th, and then I wanted the 21st, but Sue just said that there's going to be a meeting, so I think we have to scratch that one out. And I just want to let people know, this board know when we go into budgets, I think it may be two meetings. Um, and can three. Can you send me out a doodle poll of those? I can. Because I. Yes. I will. There's some things that are not in my calendar that I wouldn't want to. And we're looking for two extra select board meetings for budget. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Instead of trying to paste those calendars right now. Right. Good. I could really look at that. So our. <coughs> outline also for um, town meeting and budgets we'd like to have um, draft budgets by like January 8th okay because Kim will have to input those budgets into the town report yeah oh right yeah and then our last meeting in January is the 22nd, and then we, we're going to have to post the articles, the warning. Mm -hmm. And some of the articles are going to be based on our budget if I want to try to offset taxes. Okay. So one step at a time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we'll, I'll do my best to like, coach you along. Okay. And, explain things. I need you to understand this budget because come March. You're going to make us explain it. That's, that's <laughs> your job as elected officials. <laughs> to say anything like that in the job description. It says, look at everybody here in the headlight looks. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I hesitate for just a second waiting for somebody to say something and then I just give it a second and I'm like, okay. <laughs> jump in here. I attempted it one year. You did. You're getting better too. It's like, but um. Well, I finally feel like, like I'm finally getting the cycle of the year. You know, it's like, oh <laughs> it takes yes, a while. this all sounds familiar. Right. right. This all, you know, like yeah. it's taken how many years to kind of feel like I know. You know understand the flow of this. You know, yeah. here we are again. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Happened again. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think, you know, watching the boards change over time, um, it takes at least two years, but three mm -hmm. before I see people comfortable to, except for Nate, you know, Nate. First Nate got it right for Yeah, you know. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Confident. The budgets. <laughs> It's a learning curve, and it's like you just, you know, as an elected official and having full time jobs, it's harder for you folks to understand 
you know, the dynamics and the processes, mm -hmm. unlike me, that I'm here, you know. Yeah. 60 hours. 50 hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job, right? Yes, so, it is. Um, That's yeah. why we turned to you at town meeting. That's true. Um, so I will do a doodle poll. Yeah. And I want to also get the drafts out to you, the ones that I'm confident. The that. warrants? No, the drafts. The, the draft budgets. Budget, yeah, the draft yeah. budgets. So you can like review them, mm -hmm. and then if you have questions, then we can be prepared. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, I, don't, I think we're going to be okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion about the town meeting preparation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Next up is to discuss uh, discuss and schedule a joint meeting with Dummerston Select Board. Right. Um, so, unfortunately, Dummerston meets the very same nights we meet. That could be good. And <laughs> we can zoom. Um, we could we could devote part of it to a joint meeting and break off and. Yeah. Have a regular meeting. Well, I was thinking of that too. Now they're meeting every Wednesday because every other Wednesday they're doing budget. Okay. So maybe maybe we can dedicate, you know, a half an hour. And what is the purpose of this meeting? So we are supposed to meet jointly. We, the two boards, annually. Oh, and we've met. The last time we met, Josh was still on the board. So yes. Was, uh, and you. <coughs> you yeah. had to. Before you, too? Yeah. It's before me. Yeah. Right? Or I wasn't there. I don't remember right. ever meeting. No, I don't think the two of you have been to a joint meeting. You have been to I've one. I've definitely been to one. I, I don't think Eric's been yeah, to one. Yeah, you and Eric started the same year, right? Maybe it was, okay. Then that was like four years ago, David. Anyway. It has not been annually. Need to do it. Okay. <laughs> so, so we own a we own a, a, a sand pit with them. Yeah. Pit, and we're supposed to um, come up with plans and so capital plans. And black yeah, we should be reviewing um, the spreadsheet that we set out back in 2018 um, to make sure we're staying on track. The other important thing is so the gravel pit in Deverson that we own jointly. Um, we're due to do blasting in 2025. That's going to be huge. And the software gets to do it, right? I'm sure. You want to pull the trigger? Totally. Push the button? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Especially. <laughs> um, so that is going to be a first for a lot of people. Um, Lee Chamberlain is their road foreman. And Lenny Howard will have to be there. And um, so we're going to discuss blasting, how that is, what the process is, because it's, there's a lot to it. Um, I can tell you that we have funds, unless we, we do have to update the estimate to make sure we're covered with funding. Um, and we have to look at the yardage price. So we set the, the price for yards of material that come out of there um, for each town. And then um, we should look at the reclamation plan and see where we're at in that stage. And also Carpenter Pit, where we lease that pit from private owners, that's where a majority of our sand is coming from right now. That lease is due to be renewed May of 2025. Oh. And we can renew for another 10 years if the owners want to. Where is that pit? That one's in Dumerson as well. And it is closer to Brattleboro. Is, is that a joint effort? Yes. So that is with Dumerson too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so the lease is um, shared. And we are doing a reclamation there. Uh, I just got pictures, so it looks pretty good. 
but um, so there's we have to talk about both pets, and I think it's imperative that we get this on this calendar sooner than later, because after March we're going to have new boards, and we're you know right. Um, do do we want to do this during budget season now? Could we do it during that window when you know the budget's done, but we have a little We can do it in February. I think we should do it for February. Because yes. it still gives us time if we have to renew a contract. Yeah. Um, of course, we're going to have to get legal counsel to look at it. Yeah. Um, and Dummerston is a board, a select board. They don't have a town administrator or a town manager. Right. So um, I'm willing to like be that person to support that effort. Um, but yeah. So let me see. You float that with that. Float that to that and see. February. Be willing to do February. Yeah, I think there's a lot going on. They they their plates are totally full right now. Yeah, I would think so. Um, but I think February makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Any other comments on the board about that? Any comments in the room? All right. Moving on to Suckboard Old Business. <coughs> um, not sure if it's old business or not, but I have been promising to write the draft of a letter um, in response to a lot of the anxiety that a lot of taxpayers have been feeling this year. Um, Select Board explored a bunch of different possibilities, including having a town special meeting to do a bunch of different things, and we ultimately decided that none of those were really substantive so um the next best thing was to write a letter to our legislators um and so i cobbled together a draft should i read it okay sure. um it, this is my this is your version just yeah. so you you're so surprised you agree to um to edit it um because I needed somebody to look at it. So um, a common response from our legislators when faced with concerns about steeply rising taxes is that taxpayers themselves set the amount of taxes to be raised via their approval of town and school operating budgets. In the case of municipal taxes, that is in fact a reliable one-to-one -one relationship, although a large majority of the increases in municipal budgets are beyond town level control. Since the state determines the educational tax rate after all school budgets have been passed, it is a little disingenuous to apply the town's approve the budget's response to concerns about the education tax rate. An example of this can be seen in Putney, where we belong, against our will, it should be noted, to a cons consolidated school district. Putney voters were presented with a reasonable 2.7 increase, but were then handed a 13% increase from the state. This suggests that even if the voters of our school district drastically slashed the school budget in the, same, in the name of lower taxes, there would not have been a corresponding decrease in the rate handed down by the state. Something is broken here. In response to our constituents, who are presented with large tax bills that many of them are simply unable to pay, the Putney Select Board has been looking at ways that we might be able to help relieve the tax burden. To our dismay, our conclusion was that we had little to no avenues to do so because the majority of the power to generate revenue does not currently lie with select, local select boards, but with the state. Because of this, the Town of Putney Select Board has opted to formally petition you, our legislators. We ask that, one, upon reconvening, you immediately pass retroactive relief to overburdened Vermont taxpayers who are now struggling to pay astronomically and unexpectedly high 2024 property tax bills. Two, going forward, you restructure school funding in such a way that it more closely aligns with the actual budget increase decreases uh, slash decreases passed by taxpayers and find funding sources that do not center the majority of the burden on property owners. Three, 
You allow municipalities to seek a larger variety and a larger share of alternative revenue from municipal budgets. For example, A, increase the local options tax to allow for up to 2%. B, lower the state share of the local options tax to no more than 20%. C, increase the property transfer tax and directly provide the municipality in which a sale occurred with a portion of the proceeds. Four, you hold municipalities harmless for all exempt properties. A, by state statute, a wide variety of properties enjoy fully exempt status with no obligations to pay pilots to towns in which they reside, including county held properties. In addition, the state limits pilots, pilot payments to a small subset of properties they may own in any given municipality. In essence, the tax burden to provide the necessary municipal services to these tax exempt properties is shifted onto the non exempt taxpayers. In some towns, such as Putney, the amount of lost tax revenue from these exempt, pro exempt properties is staggering. As of 2024, Putney's statutorily exempt properties, not including state or town owned properties, are valued at $126 million. $68,400, which means Putney annually loses out on $893,572 worth of tax revenue based off of the tax rate, a 2024 tax rate of 0 0.7088. <clears throat> Many of these organizations operate on small budgets and paying property taxes on their holdings would interfere with their missions. For this reason, the state should consider a hold harmless program to relieve the burden on exempt rich towns. Holding towns harmless from last lost tax revenue is not new or controversial. The state currently holds towns completely harmless for any property enrolled in the land use program, land use value program. Five, alternate, alternatively, you, you require properties currently exempt under the public pious and charitable statute uh, 32 VSA 38024 to pay a pilot payment or reduce tax to the municipality they reside in. And that's all we have. <clears throat> what do you think? <laughs> I, I mean, I had to read it closely when I was uh -huh. trying to make sense out of it and, and you know, um, and provide a few little edits, and I think it. I think it's a great letter. I think. Okay. I think we. Sh I think there are reasonable things to ask the legislature to consider. Definitely agree that it's reasonable and it's shocking reading this. Um, but also, thank you both for taking the time to write it, and edit it. I think it's a start. Okay. Um, when I first wrote this, and I think um, Peg. Uh, toned it down a little bit, it was, seemed a little harsh to me. But on the other hand, they are our legislators, right? Um, and I'm not sure there's any other way to state these things without being kind of matter of fact about them. Um, I'm pretty sure my numbers are correct, but Karen should look at those. Um, I did it off of the, based off of the Patriot um, online system, and it's just the, those numbers are just the statutorily private, like five hundred one c three properties, not state or town owned properties. I um, think this is important enough that we should not sign it. No, 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 no. I want to know. No, no. Um, this is just a draft. Also, yes, yeah, yeah, coincidentally, yes. it's a draft. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Uh, coincidentally, I guess um, Mike Murphy would like to visit with us on our next meeting. So we will have it ready. So we should try to get it ready by then, or at least part of it. Sure. So, so can I can put this second. on letterhead. Yeah. Put all your names on the back. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have an opening and right. kind of closing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I should have some kind yeah. of salutation. Greetings. Thanks for all you do. Now let's do us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, comments in the room? Um, I think the only thing that really stands out to me is the against our will part. Um, unfortunately, we had the option to vote out and we didn't. That's true. We didn't. Mm. Anyway, I guess I, I think the way the statute reads is we can still vote out but still have to have the other towns in the district 
okay with us voting yeah. out. Yeah. So against our will, yeah, against my will for sure, but our will maybe not so much. Mm, that's, that's a fair good. point. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I forgot that we did that. I was thinking about the original um, forced merger, which um, doesn't seem to have panned out in terms of savings at all. Right. And the other thing to think about in that scenario is that Put even if all of Putney showed up to a school meeting, we would get we would get outvoted. So um, right. I mean, we don't have a lot of say in our school board in our school uh, district um, budget. We have some. We don't have we're not powerless, but we're we're definitely. I don't believe there's any way that Putty would have been able to single-handedly get got, get our tax rate down without agreement from the other towns. Who <laughs> um, are in the same boat too? I mean, their their taxes went up the same or more in the educational piece, but um, anyway. Um, does anybody else want to take a shot at editing this at all, or? I could send it to you and see, just have you comment on it. Can't do sure, too much I've, I've been told I'm very matter of fact in my text and email, so <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm the best person. <laughs> um, or why don't, you, why don't you guys, if you want, if you have, if you want to have some time to read it, and then give me some suggestions in the email, and I can put them in to a new document and get sent on. Okay. I think I was. I think you have my edits. I'm not sure. Well, this must be. Yeah. Yes, you you worked on my shared document. Okay. So I, yeah. I just am still. Yeah, and that's where I printed it from. Right. Okay. So. Well, you gave it to me too. So. Right, but I gave I copied it and pasted it because I wasn't a hundred percent convinced <laughs> okay. that it was working because uh, I got some I got some emails that said you were actually working on it. So okay. I so I'm pretty okay. sure you were working on that copy. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, we can revert to old-fashioned paper. No, okay. I really don't want to. I want, I want to make the transition. Hey. I'm just, I don't use Google at work. Yeah. You know, I, I, I made the transition. Yes. You can do it. Yeah. I have faith in you, okay? I do. Maybe, I do I all. Maybe when I retire, you know, and I only have to keep one system in my brain. Okay, well, anyway, um, yeah, so we'll, um, Karen, if you can give me a good, like, opening. Actually, if you could just send it to me with the letterhead, and then I can. Sure. Then please work and send me comments. Mm -hmm. if you okay. If I can do it in Google, I'll put it in the Google. Right? Yeah, um, I've yeah. had trouble with the, with the logo in the Google Docs before. Oh, okay. It covers up the whole thing. I don't remember why, but... All right. I will just... But try. You can try. And I can't believe you learned to type with the two spaces between sentences. I did. I know. But I'm not giving it up. You're not that old. I'm not giving... <laughs> Thank you. I got that one out, you know. <laughs> I, I grew up in the era of uh, um, the... WWW thing that um, the 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 websites was um, just just debuted when I was in my sophomore year. Yeah. So I'm on that on that cusp. Well, my I'm mother had a rotary dial telephone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Well, I may have taken some of those out. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I put them back in. And that's <laughs> Just as I was editing, I was like, I also have a strong opinion about the Oxford comma. Oh, please, by all means. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, back in the comma department. I, I, I own that. All right. Anyway, <laughs> to, are there any other comments in the room? Okay, we're good. Um, uh, the next piece is select board reports. Um, Cannabis control board. No update on that one. Okay, recreational department. Uh, we canceled our last scheduled meeting, which was for November 21st. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Um, but we rescheduled for December 5th. Okay, so okay. we're still trucking along. Still moving. Okay. Uh, Fletcher's not here, so the next three are 
Um, any updates? The Alternative Transportation Advisory Committee don't have anything. Keep watching people, uh, getting, getting emails about grants, about all sorts of awesome things, and trying to get Karen to <coughs> revamp the Energy Committee within three days so we could write a grant. <laughs> that <didn't work. laughs> I said not happening. Not happening. <laughs> no. Come on. <laughs> I uh, control the use of alcoholic beverages. I've done nothing on that one. Uh, we're doing well here. High ac highway access policy. Eric's not even here. Event ordinance. Nothing. Okay, good. <clears throat> um, are there public comments on items on the agenda? Okay. Quick, quick. We're getting ready to get out of here before 7. <laughs> okay. So, session, we don't need one, right? Uh, well, no. That's <laughs> all we need. No. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, the next meeting date is December 11th, 2024, here at um, uh, Town Hall. That's a regular scheduled meeting and on Zoom. Um, can I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>